In this video, we'll look at applying what we've learnt about finding extrema of functions. We're going to call this optimization. Now that we've got the tools to find maxima and minima of mathematical functions, we can move to some more real world problems, kind of like the motivating problem for the extrema critical points video, where we talked about the cost of constructing a milk carton varying depending on the height of that carton. Real world problems, like the milk carton problem, often require maximising or minimising something to look for an optimal value. For example, maximising profit or minimising cost by choosing optimal input conditions. Now, these problems can be solved, as you've probably guessed, by using derivatives and calculus. Here's an eight step process that we can apply when we're trying to, to find extrema of real world functions, optimised problems. The first step says to draw a diagram if relevant or if possible. It won't always be possible and it won't always make sense, but if you can, sometimes it helps you in the second part of this step, which is to assign and state the variables that are in your problem. Once you've done that, you need to think about which of those variables is the one that needs to be maximised or minimised. In this step-by-step -step process, I'm going to refer to that as P. Now, using the given info in the, in the question or the problem statement, as well as the diagram you've drawn, if you did, you can write an equation for P, a mathematical model if you like, in terms of other variables. Hopefully it'll only be one variable, because that's what we're studying here, and I'm going to refer to that as X. So P is dependent and X is independent. Now essentially it turns into an extrema problem. We need to find the derivative, dP dx. We need to set it equal to zero and solve for X. This way we find the critical points where maxima and minima might be occurring. Once you've got those, you can use the first and second derivative tests, whichever one is your favourite, or whichever one seems to be working better, to see whether the value of x gives a maximum or minimum value. When you're doing applied problems, you also need to check the endpoints of the domain, so the maximum and minimum x values you're allowed to use, because these can sometimes be alternative optimal points. Once you've got all that information, have a look back at the question, see what it actually asked you. Did it ask you for the x values, the p values, or both? Did it ask you for a maximum or a minimum? Pick this out and answer the, pr the question appropriately. Let's try to apply that on this example. We're told that a contract is advertised for a construction of a large box-shaped building. The building needs to have a square base. It's got no roof. Apparently that's part of a different prior contract, so we're not going to worry about it but it does have a surface area of 2,700 square metres for the floor and the walls. The question says what building dimensions will provide the maximum box volume? OK, I've run through that quite, pretty quickly, so maybe pause the video and read it yourself and see if you can make sense of it. Once you've done that, try to apply the first step in the process. That is, draw a diagram and try to pick out what the variables are that we're going to be working with. I've drawn a couple of diagrams so we can see it in different ways. The 3D picture, we've essentially got a square base down the bottom, hidden down here, and some sides to give us, give us some walls. Down here in the 2D picture, it might make a bit more sense. Here's our floor space here. It looks a bit like a square. Along the sides, though, those don't have to be squares. The height could be something different from the side length of that square. Now we can start to plug in some variables. I'm going to refer to this quantity as h, the height of the building which would be there as well. The length along here, I'm going to call that x. That's going to be my side length for the square. So it'll be the same here, here, and here as well. Up on the top picture, that's going to be this one here, or down there. OK, so we've got some variables. I'm just going to state those now. So let h be the height of the building, and x be the base side length so those are dimensions of our building X and H some other things that we know is that we're talking about surface area here and we're also asked about the volume of the box so I'm going to just refer to those as capital S and capital B V S and V are the surface area and volume, respectively, of our box. 
The next step is to determine what needs to be optimised. We are asked what building dimensions will provide the maximum box volume. So we need to optimise volume, or V, so we're going to have to find some derivatives of V later. And we want to find the building dimensions. The next step is to use the given info to come up with a mathematical model for V in terms of the other variables. Here, unfortunately, we've got two, x and h, and we can't work with two variable functions at the moment. So we're going to try to figure out how to get rid of that problem. Coming on to the next slide, I've written a couple of standard equations. The surface area for our box will be the surface area of the square down the bottom, x squared, and four lots of the walls, which is just xh. So the surface area is x squared plus 4xh. And we're told in the question that that's 2700 square metres. So I can add that in as well. We also know the volume of this box. It's going to be x by x by height. So x squared h is equal to the volume. Now we need to be able to take a derivative of v with respect to one of these variables. What I'm going to do is try to eliminate h here by replacing it with something from up here. I'm going to rearrange this and find that h is equal to 2700 minus x squared over 4x. So we can use this representation for h in terms of x to change our volume function into a straight variable, sorry, straight function of one variable, v of x. So we'll have x squared multiplied by a new h. And x will cancel, and we'll have x by 2700 minus x squared all over 4. Now, the next step says, find the derivative and set it to 0 to solve for x. Here we're looking for dv dx. Maybe pause the video and have a go at that one for yourself. There's a couple of ways you could do it, either using the product rule or just simply expanding out. And I find dv dx is equal to 2704 or 675 take away 3x squared on 4. Next we need to set that equal to 0. If we set this equal to 0, we'll find that x has to be equal to plus or minus 30. And if you want to check out on the working, I've just slotted that in over here on the right hand side. So we can now say that our maximum box of, uh, building volume must occur when either x equals plus or minus 30 metres. Of course we can ignore x equal to minus 30 metres, because it just doesn't make any physical sense. We could just leave it there, but what we should really do is check whether this is going to give us a maximum, and then we should also check the endpoints of our domain. Now I'm going to check it with the second derivative test. So the second derivative of v with respect to x will give me minus 6x over 4, or minus 3x on 2. When x is equal to 30 metres, d2v dx squared is going to be equal to minus 90 on 2. And I can see straight away that's less than 0. Therefore I can conclude that a side length of x equals 30 will give a maximum for the building. Second derivative less than 0 implies a maximum. Now we should check also the endpoints of the domain. So the endpoints for x. Now, x going towards 0, or even minus infinity, doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not going to be a very big building. If it goes towards infinity, it also doesn't make sense. We can't build a building like that. So I'm going to stick with what we've found from the local minimum, uh, maximum and say that that's the one that's going to give us our maximum building volume. The only thing left then to do is to figure out what h is. To do that, we just substitute the value of x equals 30 back into our equation up here for h in terms of x. If we do that, we'll find that h is equal to 15 metres. So we can conclude by answering our question, which was what building dimensions will provide the maximum box volume or building volume. So we can say a building with height h equal to 15 metres and side x equal to 30 metres will provide the maximum volume. And that's the end of our optimization problem. So there are absolutely heaps of problems like this. Many, many different contexts, 
different application areas and looking at different types of maxima and minima and where they occur. So check out as much as you can different websites, different textbooks and also the exercises in the worksheet and get plenty of practice with this one.